So last year at this conference, Andre proposed to look at the new hash functions for hash-based maps, and I did some benchmarks for, um, like his intent was to look at the stack trace map, and this is the one I will address the last. And I also looked into how it is beneficial for uh, hash map to use the different hash functions. So the like short resume is that jhash2 works pretty well for small keys, and it also works actually well in terms of collisions. But for bigger keys, the, there is a way to optimize hash maps like twice, thrice. And um, let's look at some plots. So this one is uh, comparing jhash, jhash2, and uh, xxh3 hash functions. So you can see that like xxh3 wins for the most key sizes. Besides that, it's not evident what's happening for like very small keys. And it happens that like Facilium, for example, we're primarily interested in this small keys. So here is like a bigger picture. Uh, here, uh, the right side is key size of 1K. And uh, another hash function which actually beats every else for like large keys is uh, spooky, so it's a um, new generation of jhash, but it beats all the keys uh, at the size of about like 10k, so it doesn't make sense to use it. And also the, the blue line is xsh3, and uh, it starts at, at the key size of 240, it starts underperform comparing to like the previous generation XXH64 and 32. Um, because at this key size, the original implementation switches from, uh, from like uh, scalar to vector implementation, and uh, scalar implementation actually like, it is not very good. Um, so yeah. Another another hash function which was mentioned the last year was uh, zip hash, and it turns out that it actually like in terms of speed it underperforms the everything else. Yes. So your question about the previous slide uh, yeah. is any of those implementations vector based? So like AVX? No, no, no. It, it's all scalar. Scalar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, for for BPF it doesn't make any sense to use s vectors. So. Um, yeah, yeah another, another comment here is that um, all, all the functions here, besides the xxh3, uh, they were developed uh, with O2 in mind, x optimization. Uh, xxh3 performs better if it is compiled with O3. However, funny thing is that if I compile both xxh3 and hash map with O3, it actually behaves worse. So. <laughs> Can we compile like single .c file in kernel with O3 and everything else with O2? So, so uh, I, I did uh, compile the um, just hashmap.o and uh, xxh3 with O3, okay. and it performed worse than the O2. Yeah, but I'm saying like if we have like xxh3 in in kernel, right? Like in a separate .c file, then we can compile it with O3 because we yeah, know it's much yeah, better. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so zip hash in terms of speed, it doesn't uh, get any be benefits compared to jhash, for example. And uh, here is uh, an example of how, if, if we use xxh3 in a hash map, how it affects a map. And here's like a map of uh, 100k entries, and uh, from left to right, it's like zero full and. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's. It's key size, yes. Yeah, so uh, the the map is 100k, and it is 100% full, so it's the worst case actually. And on the left, we have the the key size, and we see that like for smaller keys, uh, jhash actually outperforms it here. And it also turns out like like on different architectures, this plot in the beginning uh, is different. So for some keys, we win on like AMD. For some keys, we win on Intel, but uh, they start to diverge like for, for all the architectures at about key size of like 28. 
So like 32 is, is a good threshold to, to actually use it. And this is another slice. So this is a hash map of 100 keys, uh, 100,000 keys. Uh, the key size is 64. And uh, on the left, it's empty. On the right, it's full. And here you, you, you can see that like for um, 20, 40 percent full map, the XXSH3 uh, based hash map, it works like 40, 45 percent faster than the uh, uh, jhash based map. So for, for bigger keys, it definitely, like, definitely makes sense to use a new hash function for hash maps. Uh, those are lookups, yeah, but updates is literally the same, right? Uh, well, the <laughs> with offset. Um, yeah, one, one, one like practical question is how to actually uh, utilize it. And uh, the in this way, it actually works. So it, this hash function makes all the hash maps faster than the current uh, implementation like it, it is the same for small keys because I recently changed the, the like the J hash by J hash two, but um, um, one one interesting question is if 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 it is like possible to actually um, uh, configure the hash function per like w when you create a hash map uh, and uh, I did this. I did measurements which did this, like uh, I created just uh, 10 different hash functions and then substituted them in uh, BPF uh, general cop. And like the slow, slow, slow function was used like in the uh, user space side. And uh, in this case, actually, um, the XXH3 outperforms like all existing hash functions if we just use pieces of the XXH3 for particular key size. Because like generic XXH3 is just a switch. Like if key size is less than seven, if key size is less than 15, if key size is less than 32, et cetera, et cetera. So are there like any ideas of like if, if it's possible to like create dynamic lookup functions? Like uh, implementation which I did is it was just a hack. Like I just used the macro and created like hash functions per key size and then use it in a hash map. It's, but you will have to do this for like every map type which you want to to do this and uh, if you want to change something, you need to change like 50 functions or something like this. Like it's not the best thing. Do we, so have, a, do we have a jhash for, for 64 bit or so that we could? No, no, uh, jhash is uh, 32 bit based and like we we actually utilize we never utilize the full thirty two bits right it's um, for um, yeah but uh, all all new hash functions are sixty four bit based okay yeah and like the the original as I believe the original intent was to see if new generations of hash functions behave better for stack trace map. And I actually didn't see any difference. So it, it, it doesn't make stack trace faster because the, the most time for a stack trace we spend uh, in get per call chain. And this is like 95% of time we spend. So using new hash function makes stack trace like 5% faster. It's, it's, it's better than before, but it, it's not like any dramatical change. But in terms of collisions, uh, I did some tests. So I created a hockey kernel w which creates uh, stack trace maps with different hashes. So I just run BPF trace for a while and then I load system with some artificial load and uh, look at how many collisions each map generated. And um, wh when I run it for uh, until the map is, um, how many, I don't know, uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's about like 
forty percent full, so there should be no too, ma too many collisions, and uh, all the hash functions uh, show about like le less than one percent collision, and it's really really pretty close. And the funny fact is that Jhash always won uh, compared to Cphash and XXH3. And if I, if I run the same test like for a little longer, um, the number of collisions uh, obviously grow, and uh, but again, it doesn't differ to like it's not comp like distinguishable for for the such tests. And if I run the like the the the, the same test for the full night, uh, then uh, the number of collisions like is stopped at somewhere because probably I don't have too many different stack traces in, in, in my artificial tests. But at the, at the full map, like uh, if we're just getting and getting new stack traces, all these hashes will get to this theoretical limit divided by the diff number of different st stack traces. So it, it still makes sense to use XXH3 for stack trace because it does run faster, but yeah, the, this main question, it doesn't help for collisions at all. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Question. And when you say sephash, do you use half sephash or full sephash? What is half sephash? It's the 32-bit version of sephash, basically. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, the full one, like with the secret generated okay. and with 64 bits. So it might be interesting to run it with the half thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a simple test, cool. so we can run it. I guess the only question I have is like, when are you going to upstream this? Uh, soon. All right. <laughs> How much code is it in for XSH3? Because like I looked at it, it's like a lot of special casing for different ranges of keys and all that stuff. So how how bad was this? It's not way? like I don't know. It's like maybe. 5,000 lines, oh, 1,000, <laughs> 500 lines, something like this, six, maybe, maybe more. I don't remember already. It's not, it's not that bad. It's straightforward to port it to kernel style. Uh, the, the, like the XXH3 internally, it uses a uh, generic secret. So first, when you create uh, a hash function, you create uh, like two, five, six bytes or something like this, a secret, which it utilizes. So, like for hash map instead of like hash round, we would use um, a, yeah generated secret instead. Or no? Wait, wh why do you need secret? Like, why can't you just do like one shot for each key? Uh, it's it's how it is implemented. Like instead of like w when you when you pass it a seed, it it, it generates a secret. So for hash map, you just generate it on a location and then just pass the secret to the. But otherwise, it's the, like just hash. Question. Could you go? Could you go back to the uh, slide where you had the test program you were running? Would it be possible to run that uh, and grab the user stack as well? and see wh what the effect on collisions is? Yeah, sure. Thanks. I mean, uh, th this is the test, so everyone yeah. can, <laughs> can do it. I mean, the only part, like, it's it's really, really hacky because I didn't have time, so I just patched kernel, so it's like statically <laughs> creates the next stack trace map with the different hash function, so. <laughs> gotcha. But yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.